welcome to another episode of what monotheism offers versus what atheism offers. And this one is about perspective. When you believe that you are the, I don't want to say chosen people, because that only really refers to the Jews, but that you're like God's favorite species, at least, your actions will be determined by that. It's like with a spoiled child. Their behavior will become more selfish, less altruistic. And while when it, when it does encompass the entire species, though a lot of believers choose to... well, at least it encompasses all the believers that accept that particular monotheistic religion and the other monotheistic religions the followers are the subject of hate and sometimes even when they do believe the same how many white christians in the southern states accept the black christians many blacks in the United States are Christians, and yet there is still this bigotry against them from white Christians. And even when it does foster a... when it fosters empathy and sympathy for the rest of the species, that still leaves quite a lot of species. I'm not a biologist, but I believe there are thousands of other species, not all of them that we think about, not all of them that we can even really, that we're likely to come into contact with, but they're there. And when you think that you're more important than all of those combined, you're less likely to take care of nature and to, you know, be careful that you don't destroy, you know, the the home of another species. You know, we're cutting down a lot of forests. I'm really not trying to push some kind of, you know, green, you know, go green kind of thing here, but I do think that it's just common sense to not destroy the nature that is literally keeping us alive. You know, it's... the trees and plants are what's making oxygen out of our carbon dioxide, I guess it's called. You know, when we breathe out, they breathe it in, and then they give us back some oxygen. So, why are we cutting them down? exactly. Because too many people tell themselves that they're more important. And of course there will be those who hear all this and say, but it doesn't matter because there will be an afterlife. God will take care of us after this life. And that is, again, a matter of perspective. If there isn't one, and you spend your entire life not enjoying your life, as the atheist or skeptic might be more inclined to, not making the most of it, enjoyment is one thing, but trying to make things better for future generations, you know, why, why would you try to improve things if things are already better in the next life, you know? So, that belief leads to, you know, more of this active or just passive destruction of what nature needs and what you know, just pragmatically, will keep our future generations alive. We are, in effect, shortening their lifespan greatly after, you know, 
previous generations and current generations are working so hard to keep us alive for a long period of time. When you don't think that you are the navel of the universe, when you realize that we are essentially an insignificant speck in the vast and expanding universe, possibly even multiverse. Yes, at first it does scare you. At first it's bothersome, but after a while you realize that this is likely to mean that in some form or another life and consciousness c could quite possibly go on somewhere else. Even if we do die, there will be life and consciousness somewhere else with an infinite amount of different opportunities. Sooner or later it will or has. So we sometimes forget just how old our you know, just our own planet, just that, has been, you know, at least theorized to exist. I am not an astronomer, so I don't know exactly, but it either does already exist somewhere else, or it will eventually. So that's about what I have to say about it.